morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to follow our discussions of Shraddha from last week with a class about the details of postures. And the reason is this. The opposite of Shraddha is doubt. And doubt can come in some different forms. One is self-doubt, just an insecurity interiorly. There can also be confusion, and there can be skepticism. You can let me know if you can think of other types of doubt, but I think that's the kind of the three basic forms that we, it could take. Insecurity, confusion, or skepticism. And so I'm thinking today, especially since I haven't been with you for so long, um, that it might be useful to get very specific about some of the details of um, a few of the postures that we use frequently. So you can check back in and verify for yourself that you understand them and that you're doing them uh, as well as you can. So uh, I think what I will do is talk a little bit about um, a few of the postures, give you a few of the areas where you can uh, focus and we'll practice it a couple times and then we'll uh, do some repetitions so you can get the feel for it. Um, I first want to begin with talking about the forward bend. I have mentioned to you in the past that the spine can flex, which means round forward, or extend, which means arch back. It can rotate, which means spiral one side or the other, and it can side bend laterally. So those are the four uh, things that the spine can do. And when we're looking at a posture, we always want to initially find out what is the function of the posture on the spine. So uh, our basic forward bend is a function of rounding, flexing the spine. However, as you are probably aware, most of us do not need more flexion in our upper back. Um, we rather need to focus our um, stretching flexion in the lower back. So as we're going into the forward bend, um, this area of the lower back is a place for you to put your attention. And I want to just point out a couple of things that might interrupt the possibility of the lower back being the focus for the flexion. Come into Samasthiti, and as you come into Samasthiti, carefully notice the balance between the front and the back of the foot, equally balancing on the heel and the ball of the foot. Now one thing that tends to happen when we go into the forward bend is that the weight gets disp dispersed back into the heel, and it turns into an exercise that emphasizes hip flexion rather than back flexion. So let me show you. Just watch. We begin by raising the arms up, and if you let your weight become unbalanced to the back, you see how my hips go way back, and I'm actually kind of arching my lower back, and this is where I'm getting the flexion in my hips. So. Element number one, when we go forward, we want to make sure that we don't force the hips back. And we practiced this, some of us, in Conkling Hall about a year ago. So, um, well, let me give you a couple more elements, and then we're going to go to the wall. So first element, when we're going down, we're pulling the belly in and trying not to let the uh, hips displace back. That's going to really force you to use your belly and you're going to feel the lengthening in the lower back. When we're in the pose, you will feel also your hamstring stretching. To increase the hamstring stretch, we don't want to just push the knees back. We actually want to lift the sit bones up. So you're going to feel that when we're in action. Then the other thing I want to point out is when we come up, 
We also want to try to keep the hips, or the weight balanced on the feet. So the hips don't displace back. And you're actually going to use your upper back muscles quite a bit on the ascent, bringing you up. So let's take a trial run. Go um, stand by a wall. Start about 12 inches away from it. You may be surprised how much your hips tend to travel back, but we'll give you a little bit of space to begin. So take your samastiti about 12 inches from a wall. And feel that balance between the ball of the foot and the heel evenly weighted on the front and the back of the foot. As you inhale, let your arms come forward and back. Up, forward and up, sorry. And as you exhale, pull your belly button in and then see if you can bend forward without letting your hips bump into the wall. You're going to tuck your tail between your legs. Don't let your weight disperse back into the heels. Pull your belly button way up into the spine. And then to get up, reach your arms forward. Again, try not to let your hips bump into the wall as you come all the way up. And then bring the arms down to the front. Now, if you did not bump into the wall with the buttocks, move back about six inches away. It's going to be a bigger challenge. If you did bump into the wall, and you might even need to move more forward, um, stay in that more forward position and see if you can work more in the belly and not let your hips go back so far. So let's try it a couple more times at the wall. Equal balance under the ball of the foot and the heel. Inhale, arms forward and up. Now as you bend forward, think of pulling your belly button up into your spine and pulling your tail between your legs so your hips don't displace back. Feel into your feet so you're not forcing back into the heels. And then keep the weight balanced under the front of the back of the foot. Open your chest up and see if you can bring yourself up again without letting the hips bump into the wall behind you. And bring the arms down. So if you still didn't hit the wall, you're going to go a little farther back. You're not going to be able to go all the way back because um, there is flesh there that's going to get in the way. Um, try it one more time using the wall as uh, feedback. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, engage the belly. Tuck your tail between your legs. Keep the weight balanced under the feet. Bend yourself forward. Hopefully this is going to make you feel that you have to use your abdominals a lot more. And Maybe you can feel the stretch in the lower back more. And then inhale, bring yourself up, open the chest, come all the way up to the top, and lower the arms down the front. Okay, we're going to do it three times in succession and then stay for three breaths. If you want to stay at the wall, if that's helpful, go ahead and do that. Or if you prefer to step away, um, do what you prefer. We're going to keep the weight balanced in the ball of the foot and the heel. That's your point of focus. Inhale, arms forward and up. Exhale, feel your belly pull in, your tail tuck under, bend down. So you want to be rounding the lower back, relaxing the upper back, and not letting the hips go into the space behind you. And then keep tucking your tail underneath you. Use your belly, use your upper back so you can come out, uh, come up again without letting your hips move into the space behind you. Do that twice more. Pull the belly in. Keep the weight evenly balanced, front and back of the foot. You might feel like you're going to fall on your face. You've got to use your belly a lot more. And inhale, open up and try to keep your tail tucked. Feel your upper back working as you open your chest to come up. And do that one more time. Feel the weight balanced under your feet. Pull the belly up into the spine. Bend yourself down. And then pull the tail between the legs as you lift up. Try not to let your hips displace back. And then exhale, lower the arms down the front. And now we are going to go into the pose and stay for three breaths. When we stay, once we get down there, we're going to check all the feet and heels equally balanced. And then we're going to work on lifting the sit bones up towards the ceiling to increase the stretch in the hamstrings. Inhale, arms forward and up. Draw the belly to the spine. Tuck your tail the knee in between your legs without letting your hips displace back. Round forward. Relax the upper body. 
Notice, stay in your inhale, keep your feet balanced front to back. Stay as you exhale, pull your belly to your spine and see if you can lift your sit bones a little higher to the ceiling. Two more breaths. Inhale, staying equally balanced front and back of the foot. Relax the neck and shoulders. Exhale, pull the belly button up to the spine and reach your sit bones to the ceiling. One more breath like that. On your exhale, be sure you're drawing the belly up into the spine, reaching the sit bones up, and then keep your tail tucking as you inhale to bring yourself all the way up to the top. And exhale, tuck the belly in, relax your arms down, and soften the breathing. So please note for yourself what you discovered there. Was there anything different from the way you normally experience that posture? And right now, do you feel your lower back? Are you aware of some sensation in the lower back? Relax the breath. Stand evenly on the front and back of the foot. Tall to the crown of the head. Okay, I next want to talk about the twisted triangle. Uh, when we're twisting, our primary concern is the rotation of the spine. The hips are involved in this and the hamstrings as well, but your main thought is what's happening in the spine, all the way from the center of the skull, which is where the top of the cervical spine is, all the way down to the tailbone. So number one thought is trying to rotate the spine as fully as possible from the tail to the crown. Another uh, thing that often happens, especially if your hamstrings are tight, is that one of the knee buckles and you lose the stability of the pelvis. So uh, if your hamstrings are tight, you might try using a blanket or two as we do the practice. Um, session, this practice runs, to make sure that you're really rotating your spine and not just buckling the knee. And then the other detail I want to talk about is when you move down into the pose, you're twisting the spine as much as possible, but not displacing the arm back. If I just push my arm behind me, that actually doesn't add anything to the spinal twist, and it's not so great for my shoulder. So the arm is straight up, and I'm trying to twist the spine, and notice that my palm is facing the same direction as my chest. That is making sure that I'm in an external rotation in the shoulder. So let's try, we're gonna to go to the same side a couple times. So if you have a couple blankets or a pillow or something, a yoga block of course would work, uh, or a little stool that you can put there, um, put that inside your left foot. And also I want to say, if you're having any trouble with your shoulders, it's perfectly fine just to come up to shoulder height with the palms up. Um, I like to, I usually instruct this lifting all the way up just to give us more opportunity for range of motion, but it's absolutely fine to modify this so that your arms are at shoulder height. Okay. So let's work with the details a couple times. So inhale, take the arms wide, palms up, you can stop at shoulder height or reach all the way up. And then as you exhale, I want you to turn your breastbone to the left and then reach down with your right hand. Try to keep both legs straight. Turn the chest and notice that your palm is directly above your shoulder, not pushed back, and facing in the same direction as the chest is turned. Keep the right arm straight and just feel from your tailbone all the way up to the crown of the head that you're getting a rotation. And then come up to the top, lower your arms down, and we'll move the prop over to the other side. 
Put it inside the right foot. Keep the legs straight. Inhale and bring the arms wide or high. And exhale, turn your whole torso. Then reach down, keep your legs straight. And then reach up with the right hand. Don't let your arm displace back. Keep your palm facing the same direction as your chest is facing. And be aware from the tailbone to the crown of the head that you're rotating as much as possible. And then come up to the top and bring the arms down. So now we'll go back and forth, which is the way we normally do this. Um, if you have two blankets, like I do, you could put one by each leg. Um, or get rid of the prop and when you reach down if you can't touch the floor you can touch the leg instead inhale raise the arms out and up lift tall up through the crown exhale rotate your breastbone as far to the left as you can and reach down with the right hand and up with the left hand palm is facing to the left Inhale, bring yourself all the way up to the top. And exhale, turn your torso. Let the breastbone face to the right, the right palm face to the right. Twist from the crown to the tail. And bring yourself all the way up to the top. Center yourself. And exhale, lower the arms down the sides. We'll do two more repetitions, then we'll stay. Inhale, arms lift. And exhale, think of the twisting of the spine and then the reach down. Left palm facing left hand directly above the shoulder. Inhale, all the way up to the top. And exhale, twist the spine, then reach down. And inhale, come all the way up to the top. And exhale, arms out to the sides and down. One more repetition. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, feel the turning of the spine and then reach down. Breastbone facing left, palm facing left. Inhale, up to the top. And exhale, turn the whole torso to the right. Press bone and palm facing to the right. Inhale, all the way up to the top. And exhale, arms out and down. And now we're gonna go into the posture and stay for three breaths. We'll have the details. We're gonna focus on the twist of the spine. Inhale, float the arms out and up. Exhale, turn to your left. Then reach down, both legs straight, turn the chest to the left, stay and inhale. You can check that your hand is directly over your shoulder. Stay and exhale, pull your belly into your spine and think of rotating from the tailbone to the crown. Inhale, feel your chest open, facing the breastbone to the left. And exhale, stay and focus on the rotation from tail to crown. One more time, inhale. Complete exhale, and float up to the top on the inhale. Then exhale, turn the whole torso to the right. Keep both legs straight, turn the chest and the palm to the right. Stay and inhale, and stay and exhale. Think of the twisting of the whole spine from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Inhale. Check where the palm is facing, the location of the hand. Stay and exhale and twist the spine. Once again. And inhale, come up to the top. And exhale, arms out and down. And bring the feet back together. Come to Samasthiti.
Check the details of Samastiti. The feet are in line. The middle toe, middle of the ankle, middle of the knee, middle of the hip point. Neutral spine, so you shouldn't feel either like you're thrusting yourself forward, nor do you need to tuck your tail under. Just lift through the crown, relax the shoulders. Feel that balance under your feet. Stand tall, relax the breath. Okay, now we're going to look at the half squat. This is a really important posture. It really gives us a lot of strength. This again is spinal flexion. Um, so the emphasis is on stretching the lower back, but of course there's a lot else going on there. Details to watch out for. Always when you raise the arms, unless otherwise instructed, the chin is going to stay down. Especially that will be true in a forward bend. With the exhale, you bend down. Your hands are going to come possibly onto the knees or possibly onto the floor with the um, emphasis on the lower back curve and the heels on the floor. So if you can get your hands down and drop your hips down and your knees be comfortable, then go ahead into that lower version. That's not good for any of your joints. Come a little bit higher. So that's the going down, and you can see the stretch. The way up is really important to get the arms up. And then if you notice a clip in your hip on the way up, I want you to think about your buttock muscles really hugging your thigh bones into the socket. And push yourself up. You should feel the buttock muscles really strongly on the lift up to the top. So we begin in Samastiti, equal balance on under both feet, chin drop down. Inhale, raise both arms forward and up, keeping the chin down. With the exhale, the knees bend, fold down. So we don't want to hunch the upper back ever, but lengthen your lower back. Keep your heels on the floor, then inhale, get your arms around your ears. Raise your breastbone and then push through the legs. Feel the buttocks work and it working as you straighten your knees out and bring the arms down to the front. Inhale, raise the arms forward and up. As you exhale, pull your belly button in, bend the knees. Let the lower back stretch, the upper back relax. And then inhale, raise the arms up. You can feel some work in your upper back. Then push up through the legs, and then exhale, bring the arms down. Now, a word about raising the arms. If you keep your palms facing in, you'll have a better shoulder relationship than if you um, have the backs of your hands leading. So let the palms face in. Inhale, raise both arms forward and up. Palms facing in, chin drop down. Exhale, pull the belly in. Bend the knees, so go into whatever is a comfortable knee bend with your heels on the floor, relax the upper body, then inhale, get the arms up around the ears first, and push, and you should really feel the legs working, the buttocks working as you straighten. Exhale, bring the arms down the front, and let's do it two more times. Inhale, raise the arms forward and up, chin down, palms facing. Exhale, draw the belly in, bend the knees, fold down and feel the stretch in the lower back, relax the upper back, then inhale, raise the arms up around the ears, open the chest and push up through the legs. Feel that work in the backs of the legs and the buttocks. Exhale, arms down the front, and one more time. Inhale, raise the arms, keep the chin down, palms facing, Exhale, hug the belly, 
Bend the knees, fold down, heels on the floor, upper body relaxed. Inhale, arms up around the ears, chest up. Push through the legs and exhale. Arms come down the front. And let everything relax. Go immediately to Samastiti. See if you can do that without readjusting. Just feel the weight under the feet. Stand tall through the legs, lifted through the spine. Relax any tension. Release the control of the breath. Notice internally. So that posture is strong and your heart will be beating, but also get in the habit of noticing after we do a posture, where do I feel the effect of that? Quite likely you can feel a lot of effect in the back of the mid part of the body. lateral triangle now. So we're going to the wide position again. Really important here that we keep the pelvis square um, and we're going to keep the front of the body in line. So imagine a belt coming around your hips. That's your deep abdominal muscles and pull that snug so your pelvis can stay still. Root your right heel down into the mat, and then slowly begin to turn your left thigh out in the socket. Do it in increments. Keep the left heel on the floor and just gradually start moving it towards the left. Stop when it wants to pull your pelvis with you. Okay, so you're going to keep the pelvis still, rotate the leg out. As you rotate the leg, you should feel some work in the left uh, buttock. Those are your, that's where the external rotators are. So that's uh, job number one is to keep the pelvis still, externally rotate in the socket without moving the pelvis. Now I want you to feel your knee and pull as so you have reins on your kneecap up to your hip socket. We're going to try to keep this idea of lifting the knee up the leg the whole time we do the side bend. This is not a rotation, so we're not twisting like last time, we're only trying to bend the side. So inhale and bring the arms up to shoulder height. Keep thinking of your leg turning out in the socket and your knee coming up the thigh. And bend down with your exhale. Now feel the things that are likely to happen. One thing that's likely to happen is your right hip is going to come forward and your chest will collapse. If you do that and you try to get your arm up, you'll just be um, working the arm and the joint and not your spine. So don't go too far down the leg. Go only as far down the leg as you can without letting your right hip come forward or your chest collapse forward. And keep the sense of your knee pulling up the um, thigh the whole time. So let's go up and down a couple times, observing those details. Inhale, arms wide. Chest is facing the wall in front of you. Keep it in that orientation. Roll your thigh out of your socket, pull your kneecap up and bend down, bring the left hand onto the leg. It doesn't need to get anywhere in particular. And then bring yourself back up. So the pelvis and the chest should stay in the same plane the whole time. When I learned this, my teacher said, imagine you're standing between two um, panes of glass. Exhale, go down to the side. Don't break the panes of glass in the front or the back. Keep the chest open, keep the right hip pulling back, and the left leg rolling back in the socket. And inhale, come back up. One more repetition. Exhale, bend down to the side. As you're bending down, pull the left kneecap up, push the right hip back, keep your chest open, and come up to the top. And bring your arms down to the side for a moment. We are going to stay, but I want to check back with the hips. 
Check that your right hip isn't rotated forward. Pull it back. Feel the left thigh rolling out in the socket, the left kneecap rolling or pulling up. Breastbone facing forward and keep it forward. Inhale, raise the arms. Keep the breastbone facing forward as you bend down to the left leg. You have a lot to do in the left leg. You're going to keep it rolling out in the socket and the kneecap pulling up. If it's comfortable for your neck, look up. Push the right hip back. Stay in inhale. Keep the chest forward. Stay in exhale. Roll the left leg out in the socket and push the right hip back at the same time. Stay in inhale. Chest open and facing forward. And stay in exhale. Roll the left leg out. Push the right hip back. And inhale. Come up to the top. And exhale. Bring the arms down. Notice the stretch in the right side, but also notice if you're sitting in your hip. Pull the right hip back underneath you so your spine is lifted. Front of the head lifting up. And then unrotate the left leg. Bring both legs back into Samasthiti. And relax for a moment. Notice what you feel. We just stretched the right side, but we also did a lot of work with the left leg. See what you're feeling there. Relax the breath. Keep noticing. Let's take the legs wide and do the same thing with the pose on the other side. But first we want to check that we're standing well through both feet. And then notice that the pelvis is centered, the chest is centered. Pull that belt of muscle around your hips and keep the pelvis nice and still. Root down through both heels. Keep the left leg steady and then in increments Start to roll the right leg out in the socket, turning the toes towards 90 degrees, not asking them to get there, but just going until you feel like you can't go any farther with that leg without moving the pelvis. Keep the pelvis still. So you should feel some work in the right buttock. And now we're going to pull the kneecap up the leg. Keep the chest forward. Inhale, take the arms wide. And roll the right leg out in the socket. Pull the kneecap up the leg. Push your left hip back. Keep the chest forward. Just feel that for a moment. Feel that sense of rolling the thigh out in the socket, lifting the kneecap, pressing the left hip back. And lift up to the top. Bring the arms down. Check that you're still standing well in both feet. The pelvis is centered, which probably means you need to pull it in from the left a little bit. Now let's do three repetitions. Inhale, arms wide. Think of your right thigh rolling out in the socket, the kneecaps lifting up, the left hip pushing back, chest stays open. And inhale, lift back up to the top. Centered with the pelvis in the chest. Exhale, bend down to the right. Roll your right thigh back, pull your right kneecap up, push your left hip back, and inhale, come up to the top. Center the pelvis, keep the breastbone and belly button facing forward. Bend down again with the exhale. Keep pulling your right kneecap up, and lift up to the top. Recenter the pelvis, and exhale, bring the arms down. We're just going to reset for a moment before we stay. Both feet connected to the floor, spine lifted. You're, even in, we're in this um, starting position, you have to be using the muscles in the right buttock. So check that you're rolling the thigh out in the socket. Pull your kneecap up on the right side. Inhale, arms wide. And exhale, bend down to the right side. Pull your right kneecap up your leg. Push your left hip back. You can look up if you like and stay while you inhale. 
Feel that the chest is open and pointing forward. Stay at exhale. Roll the right thigh out. Push your left hip back. Stay again. Inhale. Roll the thigh out and pull your right kneecap up to the hip. Stay and exhale. Pushing your left uh, hip behind you. One more breath. Pull front of the body facing forward, rolling that right leg out in the socket. And inhale, come back up to the top. Center the hips. Exhale, arms down. Take a moment there. Pull your hips back in from the left side. Draw them underneath you. And then unrotate the right leg. Step both feet back into Samasthiti. Feel your balance under each foot. Ball of big toe, ball of little toe, center of the heel. Stand lifted without tension, relax the shoulders, relax the breath, stay present inside the body. We're going to work on extension here, spinal extension. So come to the back of the mat and stand on your knees. Extension is arching the spine, lifting the chest. The lower back and the neck, the cervical spine, extend quite easily. Their curve already goes in that direction. Um, the upper back tends to be what's called kyphotic. It's flexed already. So it's harder to get extension there, but that's where we need it. We're going to take um, sweeping arms, Vajrasana. This is an easy way in. And we will go ahead and allow the throat to open so you can feel this, the flexion of, uh, sorry, the extension of the whole spine, the arching of the whole spine. As you inhale, arms out and up, and lift the chest, lift the chin. Feel the whole spine arching, feel the stretch in the front of the body. And then when you exhale, bend down, bring your hands behind your back. Feel the stretch in the lower back, the relaxed stretch in the neck. Inhale, bring your arms out wide, lift your chest up first, and then let the whole spine arch, the whole front of the body open. And exhale, bend down. Pull your tail between your legs so you can accentuate the lower back rather than the upper back stretching. Hands go to the lower back. Let your head be heavy. Inhale and open and lift. Front body stretching. Exhale, pull your tail between your legs. Concentrate on the lower back and the neck. Stretching the upper back just softens. And then stay in your child's pose. Take a relaxed breath there. And we're going to go into uh, Chakra Vakasana, all fours. And if it's possible, I'd like you to look for just a moment. Um, the traditional, what's called cat-cow, emphasizes the spinal curves that are already there. So right now, I'm extending my lower back and my neck, which don't need practice doing that. So on the inhale, we want instead to extend the thoracic, in other words, open the chest, but notice I'm not collapsing my lower back or bending my head back very far. That's the extension. In the flexion, it's the opposite. The lower back needs stretching, the neck needs stretching, not the upper back. We don't need to get more rounded in the upper back. So as we do the exhale, the tail pulls between the legs, the head drops, the elbows soften, and I'm not getting a big hump in my upper back, but I'm trying to lengthen my lower back as I bring my hips to my heels. 
So that's a lot of details, and I'm going to try to say them all. But I, what your intention essentially is to reverse the natural tendency of the spinal curves. So when we inhale, we're going to try to reverse the kyphosis, the rounding of the upper back by opening the chest. And when we exhale, we're going to try to reverse the tightness of the lower back and the neck by letting those parts lengthen. As you inhale, these are bringing your breast bone forward without collapsing your lower back. And then as you exhale, pull your tail between your legs, drop your head down, make sure you bend your elbows, and feel the lower back lengthening as you start to move your hips back to your heels. Should it feel big stretch in the upper back there? Inhale, come up to all fours. Bring the chest forward without collapsing the lower back. And now you should feel some actual work in the upper back. And reverse, tuck your tail, drop your chin down. Let your elbows soften. See if you can keep your belly button up into your spine and keep the sense of length between your tailbone and your ribs. So concentrate in the low back. Inhale, move forward. Pull the breastbone forward without collapsing the lower back or overarching the neck. You should feel your chest opening and your back, upper back working. Exhale, pull the belly in, tuck your tail under, bend your elbows, relax the neck, and move slowly back, feeling the length in the lower back. You might be getting a stretch in the shoulders, that's fun. Twice more. Inhale, come forward. Pull the breastbone away from the belly button. And exhale, tuck the tail, drop the head, bend the elbows, feel the stretch dominating in the lower back, not the upper back. Inhale, upper back extension. Feel the arching, the opening of the front of the back, the front of the body working the upper back. And exhale, flexion of the lower spine, bend the neck, soften the elbows, Come back to child's pose and stay in child's pose for a moment. You can place your hands under your forehead or do whatever position is comfortable. Relax the breath. So you can stay there or sit up for a moment. We're going to talk about um, prone extension. If you're going into a big back bend, which would include up dog, which we're not going to do today, or even a high cobra, you're going to feel your lower back muscles really tightening up. And um, this is not the emphasis that I would like you to get from the um, back bends. What I want you to be able to feel is chest opening. Um, so there is going to be some contraction in the lower back, but we really want to work the upper back and open the chest. That's why I don't have you come too high whenever we do um, a prone a little back bend. And also be aware of the tendency of the chin to pull forward. Um, so this is going to be small, and we're thinking of trying to open the chest here rather than compress the lower back or the back of the neck. So let's come down into the belly and bring your arms into the cobra position. If that's not comfortable, you can place your hands under your forehead um, or do whatever feels good for your shoulders. But take a wide cobra if that feels okay. Right angle at the elbows. You can turn your head to one side. Think of that belt that we talked about around the pelvis and pull that snug. And then as you inhale, you know, just lift your breastbone up off of the floor. Notice, of course, that lifts your head up, but not too high. And for now, I want you to keep your chin tucked down. So take a moment here. Think of pulling your chest forward and pull your belly button up into your spine so you're not compressing the lower back too much. And then lower down and turn the head the other direction if you had it turned and let everything relax. Let the whole body relax into the floor. Try to relax the legs. 
We'll go up and down a couple times. Um, I want you to be very aware of what's happening in the upper back and the upper chest and de-emphasize any compression of the lower back. So find that belt around your hips, pull your belly button up into your spine as you exhale. And then as you inhale, raise the breastbone, bring the head and chest up off of the floor, pull your shoulders down the back a little bit, and then exhale, lower down. You can bring your forehead or cheek down to the floor, a little length in the back of the neck. Snug around the belly as you raise your chest and head up again. Let the shoulders pull down. Try to lengthen your breastbone away from your belly button so you can use your upper back and exhale lower back down. One more time before we stay. Find the support of the abdominals. That's really key. And then draw the breastbone forward. Let the head float up and the shoulders pull down the back and lower back down. So really teeny, if you can see the movement that I'm doing, I'm barely lifting my head up. Um, as soon as you go higher, you're gonna feel your lower back really getting in on the act. So let's keep it small and stay for three breaths. Start by exhaling, pulling your belt snug around your hips and your belly button up to your spine. And then inhale, float your chest and head up off of the mat just a tiny bit. Stay there and breathe in. I'm sorry, breathe out, pulling your belly to your spine. And then inhale, pull your chest forward a little bit. You can tug your hands gently against the floor and draw the shoulders down the back. Inhale, feel your chest opening. And exhale, feel your belly engaging. One more time. Concentrating on the upper back and the opening of the chest. And as you exhale, lower down. And let everything relax. And then turn to your back. Now, even though we were de-emphasizing the lower back um, extension, probably your lower back is looking for a counter pose. So bring your knees into your chest. When you bring your knees into your chest, and pull your thighs towards your belly. You're going to feel your lower back go flat down towards the floor. So let that happen. Let it go flat. See if you can relax the shoulders. And then watch your spine as you move the knees out. Straighten your elbows. Keep your hands on your knees. Watch the spine. It goes to its neutral position. And then exhale. Pull your belly in and let the spine flatten again. Observe the spine. And then move the knees away. As you move the knees away, your lumbar curve shows itself and your tailbone moves down to the mat. And pull the belly into the spine. Pull your thighs into your belly. Let your lower back go flat. Observe that flattened lower back. And then move the knees out again. Now we're going to add an extension of the legs up to the ceiling. That same movement of the spine is going to be in place. When we stretch the legs up, you're going to keep your tailbone down on the floor. When we bend the knees, you'll flatten the spine down. And with your inhale, extend both legs up to the ceiling. Don't let your back flatten. We're going to keep the tail down on the mat. And then as you exhale, bend the knees and pull them in. And now go ahead and let the lower back flatten. And then inhale. Rock the knees away till the tailbone's down and then straighten the legs up. And with the exhale, bend the knees and pull them in and let, your low, let the lower back go flat. One more time like that. Inhale, feel the neutral lumbar curve, tailbone on the floor as you straighten the legs up. And then bend the knees as you exhale and flatten the spine down. Now we're going to go and stay. Inhale with the tailbone on the mat. Stretch the legs up. You can hold the backs of your legs. And stay while you exhale. Keep your neutral spine this time. And stay while you inhale. So we're keeping the tailbone down. Again, exhale. Feel your belly pulling into the spine. But don't flatten the back. And stay while you inhale. Stay again for the exhale. 
And one more inhale. And then as you exhale, pull the knees in and let your back flatten. And then bring your feet down to the floor. Arms wider than the mat and relax a moment like that. Okay, now we're going to work on the pelvic lift, Vipada Pitam. If you have a blanket or a pillow, um, roll it up, or if you have a pillow, fold it in half so it's firm and, um, well, we're going to put it between the knees. So we want um, something that's about maybe six inches wide. So lie down on the back and place the rolled up blanket or the folded pillow between the knees. Hopefully this is going to bring your legs about hip socket distance apart, your heels in line with your sit bones. And we're just going to practice initially with the exhale, squeezing the thighs, the knees into the blanket or the pillow, and then relaxing with the inhale, working the inner thighs. One of the things that tends to happen when we lift the hips is, is that the knees go wide. So this is practice to keep them in line. Press into the blanket with the exhale and relax it with the inhale. And do that one more time. Squeeze in, feel the work in the inner thighs. And then relax it. And now we're gonna try the desk pose with that squeeze. Bring the arms down to the sides. Begin by exhaling and squeezing into the blanket. Tilt the pelvis to a flat back, and then as you inhale, raise your hips and stretch your arms up and back. So we're working the inner thighs, the back thighs, and the buttocks. And then roll down, going through the spine, releasing the shoulders, keeping the chin tucked. When you're all the way down, relax the press on the blanket. Um, by the way, if you have some behind your head, please take it out for this. And we'll do it again. With your exhale, squeeze the blanket and flatten the lower back. And then with the inhale, lift your hips back up to the ceiling and raise the arms up and back. Keep squeezing gently on the blanket and roll down, keeping the thighs in line with the hip socket. Knees not going any wider and release back down. And do that again. Squeeze in and lift. And roll back down. Keep that squeeze. And relax there. So this is considered a back bending position. It opens the chest. You notice that I do it in almost every class because it really counteracts a lot of the tendencies of our habitual postures and our, um, our struggle against gravity. So it strengthens the back of the body and opens the front of the body. That's why it's so important. Uh, if you're doing okay with the blanket, keep it there and we'll go up to stay for three. If you're having any trouble, can take the blanket out, but still concentrate on trying to keep your thighs right in line, right parallel with either, each other so that the feet stay evenly on the mat and the knees don't go wider than the hips. Start by squeezing in on the blanket. You can tilt the pelvis and then raise the hips and the arms up as you inhale. And then we'll stay with the exhale. Feel the belly button coming into the spine. Press the knees into the blanket. Stay with the inhale. Feel how your breath expands the chest. Two more breaths. Exhale. Use your belly. Squeeze into the blanket. And inhale. Open the chest. Once again, exhale. Squeeze the belly. Pull, push the knees into the blanket. Stay and inhale and open the chest with the breath. 
And then with the exhale, roll yourself down. Keep the thighs in line with the knees. One vertebra at a time all the way down to the floor. Relax a moment. And then take the blanket out. Feel the bottoms of the feet touching the floor. Relax the back of the pelvis into the floor. Broaden the shoulder blades. Drop the back of the head into the mat. Then we'll bring the knees into the chest. Final counter pose, Apanasana. Let's do this very carefully and deliberately. Set up with one hand on each knee, drop the shoulders. With the exhale, engage in the low belly and pull the thighs in, bringing the knees towards the chest. Notice the lower back stretching. Keep the back of the neck long. You can use a blanket behind your head. And inhale, fill your chest in. Move the knees away until the tailbone is back down on the mat, but keep the shoulders dropped. Exhale, hug the belly in. Observe as the lower back flattens. Drop your shoulders. And inhale, breathe into the chest first. Move the knees away, open the front of the body a little bit, returning to the natural lumbar position. Exhale, hug the belly. You're emphasizing the stretch of the lower back. You may also find a little stretch in the back of the neck. That's great. And inhale, breathe into the chest. Soften the shoulders. Twice more. Exhale. Hug the belly up into the spine and the thighs into the belly. Let your lower back flatten. Drop the shoulders. And inhale, let the chest expand. Do one more on the own. This is considered a forward bend. We're emphasizing spinal flexion. See if you can feel that. The stretch in the lower back. Even though it's gentle, it should be clear. When you're ready, we'll move into Shavasana. This is sometimes called the most important posture. So let's give it our uh, full attention. I just need to adjust one thing with the phone for a moment. You're going to rest out on your back. Now, if the lower back is ever uncomfortable when you're going into relaxation, roll up a blanket or a towel or take an extra yoga mat and put it underneath your knees. That will reduce the extension that's being demanded of your lower back by straightening the legs out. Of course, you're uh, welcome here to use support behind the head. I encourage it. Um, especially if you feel your chin jutting up towards the ceiling. So once you've checked that your lower back is fine, legs are going to be separated about as wide as the mat, feet about as wide as the mat. Make sure that the hips feel easy. And then check your arms. You want them, the hands a bit wider than the mat so that the palms are turned face up. Shoulder blades spread really nice and wide on the mat. And continue to settle and turn the head slowly to make sure that the neck is released. And then settle yourself into releasing into the floor. Once the body is comfortable, 
allow it to be still for the whole duration of the Shavasana. This gives the nervous system a chance to rest to uh, not having to respond to stimuli for a few minutes. So body comfortable and relaxed. Body still, except for the natural movement of the breath. Bring the attention to the body. Stay present. Don't miss these few minutes of relaxation. The body having a rest, being restored, be present to it. The breath just breathes itself. Soften, keep releasing, keep relaxing.
Observe the body. Scan from the bottoms of the feet slowly up the legs and be sure that everything is completely relaxed. Soft around the knees, soft around the hips. Relax around the pelvis. The belly soften. Notice the lower back. The whole length of the spine relax. Broad across the shoulder blades. Soften in the mid chest and the upper chest. Relax the shoulders. Notice the shoulders and the arms being supported by the floor. Relax the palms of the hands and the fingers. Back of the neck. The jaw, the face. And then prepare to move out of the relaxation. Move slowly. Move with the fingers and the toes. And gradually move into a stretch. Lengthen yourself all the way from fingers to toes. And then hug the knees into the chest. And roll to your side. And come up and sit. I just want to talk for a moment about seated posture. This is perhaps the most important posture if we're aiming towards meditation. So um, the standard cross-legged position, you want to sit at the very front of the folded blanket and tilt your pelvis forward a little bit. Um, and if your knees are not down or if your back's uncomfortable, you may need to sit on more. Also, if you feel pain in the knees or the hips, you can prop your legs up. Feel free to prop yourself up as much as necessary. Um, so if having something under the knees or one knee, depending on what's going on, feels better, please do that. Um, I also always welcome you to sit on a chair or you can try sitting on a cushion this way. Um, a little higher cushion works well, feet down on the floor. Um, for some people that works a lot better in the hips. So main important instruction is that we get to a place where the spine can be lifted and the rest of the body can be comfortable. So you can sit without worrying about, without thinking constantly about how uncomfortable you are sitting. So find a comfortable seat. If you're sitting on a chair, you sit right at the very edge, put your feet flat on the floor. Um, don't lean back into the chair. And if your back is tired, you can take a support and put it between the back of the chair and your back, not leaning into it, but just feeling that support sometimes really helps the muscles let go. So get yourself in a position where you can sit comfortably for just a few minutes. Feel your sit bones reaching down, your spine lifting up. The top of the head reaches up, that drops the chin down, shoulders soften. You can do whatever hand position works. You can put your hands down on the knee or up on the knee. If you like the mudra, you can fold the index finger down to the thumb. You can 
Just rest your palms um, on top of each other in your lap. Find a comfortable position and then maintain it. And adjust a little bit of conscious breathing. Feel your sit bones. And then as you exhale, imagine that support coming all the way up through the spine to the crown of the head. And pause for a moment. And then inhale, feel the breath in the nose, down the throat, broadening out to the shoulder blades, then the middle of the chest, then the lower ribs, then to the belly. And exhale, gather upwards from the sit bones, breathe up along the length of the spine, all the way to the crown of the head, soften the shoulders, engage the belly gently. And inhale, follow the breath in the nose, down the throat to the uh, collarbones, to the upper, middle, low ribs, then the belly. And begin again. Exhale, breathe upwards from the sit bone, up the length of the spine, all the way to the crown of the head. Soften the shoulders. And inhale, follow the flow of the breath in the nose, down the throat, gradually filling the ribs from the top to the bottom, then to the belly. Do three more breaths like that, slowly and specifically. Take a little pause when you complete the exhale, a little pause when you complete the inhale. And then relax your breathing, connect into the sit bones again, lift the spine, relax the shoulders. We'll take just about a minute of quiet here, letting the breath breathe itself and being aware of the steady, comfortable seat of the body. your hands to your chest, feel the rims of the palms touching, bring the base of the thumbs to the base of the sternum, internal observation, notice your level of calmness, clarity, presence, versus your level of confusion or self-doubt, confusion, us. Feel where you are. Is there a sense of shraddha, of 
self-confidence, of faith in yourself and in the system, this yoga system. It's a question for examination. And yoga is considered a science of self-observation. So the answer comes from the way that the practice interacts with you. Now slowly open your eyes. Namaste. Thanks for being here this morning. Good to see you, Pat. So you can let me know. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do on Thursday yet. If you like getting into these details, I can certainly do another class like this with other postures. And if there's any postures that you would like to examine more closely, um, this would be a good time. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have any reaction uh, about continuing like this for another class or not. Okay, and I will get clear on that with your help if you give it. All right, I hope that you're feeling well. We have some sweet little snowflakes flying around outside. Um, so enjoy the day. Be well and let me know if there's anything that you would like to look at specifically on Thursday. Okay, take care. Thanks everybody.